آؤزبلّہشیطوان رجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربی شرحلی صدری و یسر علی عمری وحل القطن من لسانی یفقہ ہو قولی وی اسٹارٹ ود ورس سیون آف سورا یوسف اٹ سیز انڈیڈ ان دا اسٹوری آف یوسف اینڈ ہز برادرس دیر آر سائنس فار دا انکوائرس نو اللہ سبحان تعالیٰ سیز دیٹ دس اسٹوری ہیز سائنس اور اٹ ہیز لیسنس And you might wonder, what are the lessons in Surah Yusuf? So many, so many that it is uh, difficult to decide from where to begin and where to end. M- maybe the most important lesson that we learn through this Surah is the unfolding of destiny and the importance of realizing that Allah's vision is unlimited and our vision is limited. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expresses a concept which is best understood through this surah. In surah al-Baqarah, Allah says, Maybe you hate something but it is good for you and maybe you love something but it is bad for you. And Allah knows and you do not know. And we will see in this surah, uh, uh, Yusuf alayhi salam plunging out of the fire into the frying pan every minute of his life he seems to be sought with disasters full of problems why so that allah teaches us that allah knows and you do not know then in a, another important concept that comes out in this surah is the concept of inna ma'al usri yusra indeed with hardship comes ease things are never as bad as they seem and things are darkest before dawn then in this surah we learn the concept of sabrun jameel it teaches us what is sabr and what is beautiful sabr then we learn the importance of tawakkul of trusting in allah and most of all we learn the meaning of ihsan of beauty in allah's eyes that is why allah says in this verse that in the story of yusuf and his brothers there are many lessons to derive and many warnings for those who ask and these people who were asking were the people of Quraysh <clears throat> the obstinate enemy of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam just imagine that scene for a moment that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is sitting there amidst his bitterest enemy and this sura is being revealed verse 8 his step brothers held a meeting and said to one another This Yusuf and his brother are loved more by our father than us, even though we are a group of ten and can help him more than them. In fact, our father is clearly mistaken. <coughs> Now here Allah shows a scene from the lives of the brothers. Yusuf a.s. and his younger brother bin Yamin are stepbrothers of the elder brothers. They had the same father as but had different mothers some narrations say that uh, they were sisters uh, as uh, marrying two sisters was allowed in that sharia yusuf alay salam's mother had died before this event <coughs> excuse me now we see that these brothers are angrily discussing between themselves what they should do because they say that yusuf and his brother are dearer to the father than us while we are a strong group now you can sense their anger and this is exactly what people say today also the common cry is that this is not fair i didn't deserve this not that you analyze your own shortcomings but simply that you blame at the other person Now we know that Yaqub alayhi salam was a prophet of Allah and it is inconceivable that he would be discriminating between his sons like the way they are portraying it but they could see for themselves that Yusuf is special and instead of admitting their own deficiency they blame it on the father it's not fair he loves Yusuf more you see that is but natural that the child who is obedient who is respectful and caring is more dear one child who is rude never bothers to care but always he is demanding something such children never introspect their own behavior but love to blame it on the parents 
And by saying that we are strong, they mean that we are young men in the prime of youth. We are big and healthy and Yusuf is just a kid. So why does he love him more? And at the end of the verse, we are told that they say that our father is clearly mistaken. Now, in this story, a very important fact to remember is that they were Muslims. Generally, when we read Quran and the confrontation takes place between the good and the evil, the evil person is always a hypocrite or a non-believer. But these were Muslims. That's why the story is also relevant for us. And not just Muslims, but sons of a prophet. But look at their attitude towards their father. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights in great detail in this surah. Arrogance and rudeness are a clear error for any child to think that way or to uh, speak that way. And they were not children, but it is unforgivable for any person to speak that way about his parents in an Islamic society. Unfortunately, we find that our children these days think that it is their right to criticize parents. Then they do it wherever and wherever they want to. They have to understand that your parents are people apart from the rest of the world. You cannot criticize them like you criticize or joke with your siblings or your friends. You have to maintain their respect and dignity under all circumstances. Friendship, love and understanding between children is encouraged in Islam, but you cannot cross the boundaries of adab. In another place in the Quran, it says that lower your wings in humility in front of them, meaning that your speech to them should have love and respect for them and your body posture should also show humbleness. And it is your duty to serve them and please them. And if there is something undesirable in their behavior, you make them aware of this with tenderness and with love and with due respect. Another point is that why was Yusuf loved more? This has got multiple reasons. Number one, <clears throat> he was a child with an exceptionally good nature and mannerism. He did not respond to his father's love by taking him for granted, but he responded with love, respect and obedience. Then number two, he was a deprived child worldly wise because he had lost his mother at a very young age. And this is a proven fact that <clears throat> children who are deprived in any way are more dearer to the parents. Then thirdly, his stepmother, who was also his aunt, <coughs> loved him and tried to do more for him than her own children so that little Yusuf wouldn't feel bad or miss his mother. Number four, Yaqub also knew that he would be his heir in prophethood. The fifth point is, very natural factor is that his brothers were all young men and he was a child. And this means that there was this gap or what we call age difference between them. And we see that the younger siblings that come with the gap are always loved more and pampered by all. And the parents as well, as well as the elder siblings. It is very uncommon that they bear jealousy for them. But here we see this uncommon reaction. Siblings that are close in age usually have this kind of jealousy. So the behavior of the brothers is not governed by the common expected feeling. It is governed by something else and that is prompting from shaitan as it is stated in this verse he loves to mess up relationships verse 9 let us kill yusuf 
or throw him out to some far off land so that the attention of our father turns exclusively towards us after that we may again become righteous people now look at their shallow thinking that let's kill yusuf so that our father will love us alone now this shows that their love for their father was not love but a selfish craving for attention we want his attention and we want his time so they were contemplating an act that would cause the deepest pain to their father they know well that their father loves yusuf more but still shaitan misleads them to the extent that they contemplate this evil deed and at the end of the verse we are told that they say that after that we will become good people now just see how skillfully allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes our innermost weakness and hypocrisy to us that what we do to that we will gossip right now and then we will do toba afterwards or i'll give a sadaqa or let me enjoy my youth right now and then i'll go for hajj in the old age let me dress up in this wedding and then i'll start covering now we see that the brothers were self centered in their and their egos were huge they wanted all the admiration and attention they hate yusuf because of their ego they are jealous of him and it is this jealousy that is the root cause of many sins and the lesson for us us is that we must thoroughly introspect that we don't have these grains of jealousy in the heart now the signs of jealousy are you don't like that person to be praised number 1 number 2 you hope that their blessings are taken away number 3 you cannot see any good points in them number 4 you are happy at their loss Number 5 you love to criticize that person often. Number 6 it is from the qualities of shaitan. Now the cure for jealousy is dua that Allah help me to get rid of this feeling and by looking at your own faults. Now we get to know about two kinds of emotions in this verse and the better we know them the mature we get in gaining emotional intelligence and this enables us to make better decisions in, in life firstly we learn something about true love you see love is the most important emotion in our lives but it gets mixed up very easily with other emotions now if in this mixture or blend the ratio of true love is greater then this love can be cherished and somewhat trusted but if the ratio of love is low as compared to another impo- uh, emotion especially a negative one then this causes nothing but hurt and evil in a love where true love is dominant then the pleasure comfort honor and well-being of the beloved is more important it is looked after it is ensured but a love that highlights only its own comfort well-being pleasure and a fulfillment of your own emotional and physical needs alone then this is not love in this blend the dominant emotion is either lust or a selfish craving for attention so one should save oneself from falling into the folly that this is love and hence save yourself from the hurt it causes when exposed then the second emotion we come to know about in this verse is jealousy it is such a deadly trait that it becomes the pioneer of so many other diseases of the soul that cause evil that is why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the gist of which is that save yourself from jealousy it eat eats away your good deeds like fire eats wood have you ever thought why why would it eat up all the good deeds because it enables a person to spread so much mischief and indulge in so much evil that it far surpasses any good that he has done this trait alone is enough to ruin a person's dunya and akhirah as well 
so we must seek allah's protection against it we must take guard that we don't indulge in hasad and also protect our own selves from someone else's hasad how will we protect ourselves from not doing hasad for example we have a deep desire for something and we see that someone else has it make dua that allah bless him with that make him enjoy it make it last for him barakallahu fi and allah give me too you will see that instantly that evil feeling vanishes and as to like it's like to save yourself uh from that feeling that evil feeling which is uh, enabling you to feel bad about yourself and then to save yourself from other people's hasad defend yourself by the masnoon duas and as we are taught in this surah and hadith too don't flaunt about your blessings be mature and composed enough to keep them within you use your blessings enjoy them to the fullest but don't publicize them the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the gist of which is that every possessor of blessing is envied and nowadays it is so ironical that people have made such sophisticated devices and ways of making their blessings uh, public uh, it's not required nobody has asked you to show them to everyone and uh, people have made such sophisticated devices uh, and that is that um, like whatsapp like facebook you know there are people who call it nazar book they are eating in a restaurant eating something or cooked something nice at home they put a picture of it without realizing that there may be someone looking at it who cannot afford even the simplest and cheapest of foods how will he explain this to his children who might show the desire to go to the same restaurant when we put family pictures maybe there is someone looking at it who has no children they put romantic pictures of husband and wife maybe there is someone watching who has been divorced or the spouse is dead when they put pictures of parents hugging their children maybe there is someone someone who is a child who has no father or mother they put pictures of their latest cars there may be someone watching who can't even afford a bike so what do they gain out of it other than inviting hasad on themselves and then they complain that i have problems in my business i have problems in my married life i have problems with my children there is no one to blame you invited problems to yourself allah warned you not to do it verse 10 at this one of them said do not kill yusuf but if you must throw him into some dark well so that he may be picked up by some passing by caravan now one brother from amongst them said la taqtulu yusuf do not kill yusuf now we uh, know from some narrations that this suggestion was given by the eldest brother he was a little better than the rest of them morally and uh, they say that his name was yehuda now when you think about it this plan is being made without the knowledge of either yusuf or yaqub alayhi salam yusuf alayhi salam is just a child but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in the heart of one of them to speak up and defend yusuf alayhi salam from murder and this teaches us that nothing befalls us except by the will of allah and that's why prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith that if the whole world would gather together against you they could not harm you one jot unless allah so ordains the other brothers are going to kill yusuf alayhi salam but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in the heart of one of them that don't kill yusuf and he suggests that <coughs> instead of killing him they should throw him in a well it's the same thing we will get rid of yusuf and some day some caravan will come and pick him up and amazingly the brothers agree to this plan uh were they were where there were equal chances of 
rejecting it as well. They were on the verge of rejecting it as well. So this was Allah's way. This is how Allah protects his friends. And uh, this is uh, a way of Allah of not getting their original plan implemented. Verse 11, after this meeting, they asked their father, O oh, our father, why is it that you do not trust us with Yusuf, though we are his sincere well-wishers? So they come to their father with the evil concealed in their hearts. Now we need to know the skillful way they manipulate their father, what we call an emotional blackmail. They are coming to their father and they are putting him to the defensive. Not that we want to take Yusuf up. They know that their father distrusts them concerning Yusuf. They know that he has realized that they hate Yusuf. So they phrase it in such a way so that it becomes difficult for him to refuse. That father, what's wrong? Why don't you trust us? We are his well-wishers. And uh, we can see that they have uh, no hesitation in lying. Now here in this verse, we learn about certain uh, behavior disorders. These are actually byproducts of negative emotions. Now we must know them for uh, two basic reasons. Firstly, that we don't get so messed up and suffer from them and start putting them into practice. And secondly, that we know them so well that someone else does not make us a victim. Now one of these traits is manipulation. Now, I don't know how psychology defines manipulation, but in com common practice, this is a situation A has a need, a personal interest or a desire that is gratification of his own nafs, the benefit, uh, the interest is all his. Now, in order to achieve what he wants, he needs inevitably some sort of approval, help or support from B. Now, if the objective of A has something negative, for example, it could be evil, it could be damaging, it could be immoral, it could be risky, involving a big risk, it could be too self-centered. And because of these reasons, he does not want that he gets exposed or he knows that B will not approve of it or another thing that he does not want his own image to be damaged. Now, he has two tactics. Number one, that he will say something that he will make B look and feel like a culprit instead of himself and put him on the defensive. So the result is that B gets so busy in defending his own integrity that he is left with no strength to oppose. And the second way that A will use some human weakness of B against him. And it appears to be like his benefit. The second behavior disorder in which we come to know from this verse is lying. The easiest solution to the problem. And what is that lying? Now just look at the words of Yusuf al-Islam's brother. Where they use tactic number one. Of manipulation, O oh, our father, why is it that you do not trust us with Yusuf? This is like when someone comes up and says, I know you will never agree with me. Or when children say, I know you won't allow me. In the first place, if you are that sure of disapproval, then why are you putting up the request? You have some hope of approval. That's why you are putting it. And the other person, in order to clear himself of guilt and blame, he will agree, even though reluctantly, and look at the next approach. We are his sincere well-wishers. The second behavior disorder, a white lie, and mostly it is seen that people who try to rub in this phrase very often that I am your well-wisher and I want your good, they are not your well-wishers. And to cover up for that, they keep on saying it. True well-wishing needs no words. It reflects from every action, from every gesture. It is sensed, it is felt rather than being told or expressed. Actions speak louder than words. Then we have seen in the Quran that mischief makers of all times have this slogan on their tongue. 
in the next verse we will see the second tactic of manipulation being implemented that is making it seem as the other person's benefit whereas it is not verse 12 send him with us tomorrow that he may play and enjoy himself we shall take it good care of him just notice that how they are emphasizing their false concern for yusuf why because they have guilt and evil in their hearts and that's why they keep on protesting they say that send yusuf with us for a picnic now many people think that all forms of entertainment are haram for muslims but here we find that going to a picnic is allowed otherwise yaqub alayhi salam would not have allowed it and they wouldn't have even asked so they say that we are going on a picnic tomorrow and they are portraying that they have planned this picnic because they want to give yusuf a good time they want him to play and have fun so this is the typical typical example of the second tactic of manipulation at this point i you know remember a cousin of mine she was very young then and was fond of watching movies and the mother was of a religious nature and she did not allow movies now she wanted to see the latest hit and she knew that the mother loved and longed for hajj and that was a time when social media was not there and the only way of uh, seeing the kaaba was through photographs and movie clips and she said to her mother that you know mother they will show makkah and medina in that film and the poor mother kept waiting for makkah and medina to come and finally a set came where there were pictures of makkah and medina on the wall something which was an inevitable part of decor during those times and she said mom there is it now getting back to the verse again a lie coming up we shall take good care of him verse 13 their father said i would be worried if you take him away for i fear least a wolf should eat him up while you are off your guard <coughs> excuse me now yaqub alayhi salam listens to them and he is a father and he is a prophet as well and he can sense that there is something evil in the air but he doesn't want to say it out he doesn't want to live the wail of haya so he lets uh, so he says that it grieves me now huzn is that grief which is uh, for someone beloved he says that it bothers me and i'm not happy about it that you should take yusuf now he wasn't uh, he doesn't want to say that i fear that you will harm him because this would bring out an open confrontation and put matters worse so instead with that tact he says i am afraid that a wolf might devour him while you would be heedless of him this shows that these boys are also very irresponsible and also they are very proud and love to brag about this strength so this is something we come to know that they love to brag about their good deeds this is also uh something which a pious person or a person who is morally upright would never do this trait is also a very common practice of people who are hypocrites that they love to brag about their own uh own deeds or uh maybe something which they have of their possessions they love to brag about them 